we have started to see some quite significant shifts in the market in the last six months. So it's important to see what happened in the past. So we're looking at the 12 months to June 2021 versus a previous year. We see that the global market in retail in value is up by 1.7%. We're seeing that there is now a very clear polarization between Europe and one or two other countries like Japan and Australia, which are having a decline in retail sales, partly made up by growth in e-commerce. But even with that in, these would only come back to, um, to zero. We're seeing some markets in the middle with low growth, US pretty well at break even, Canada a minus market this period. And then we're seeing the emerging markets, Eastern Europe, we're seeing some good growth in Asia, we're seeing China um, showing its highest growth for many, many years, India still strong, Brazil, well, it's a very weak economy, but consumers always seem to find money to buy consumer healthcare products. So that polarization between the the de- I hate these expressions, but the developed world and the, de- and the developing world as marked as ever. E-commerce has absolutely been the winner. Globally, e-commerce takes 11.4% of the world market if we include all channels of distribution, uh, not just retail, if we include e-commerce, uh, multi-level. And we also put CBD in because we don't quite know where to put it. So we actually put it in as a separate channel of distribution. And you can see the US and Canadian figures very similar at least for the forecast, both forecast to be around about a quarter of the market in uh, 2030. We've seen globally and in the USA, two movements, first of all, towards prevention, and secondly, prevention being pushed even more by immunity. And and if, if if I showed you the 2020 data, that's the story. And we would have seen very little treatment. Now, very interestingly, we're seeing in terms of the 15 growth categories, some treatment categories coming back at the top of the leaderboard. We're seeing herbal antidepressants from a small base, asthma remedies, small base, topical analgesics, very strong, Voltron, of course, being part of that, but other brands doing well. We're seeing antidiarrheals coming back. Now, these categories were very weak during the lockdown, but maybe it's a part of getting back to normal, consumers wanting products that give very clear treatments very visible evidence of efficacy compared with immunity products and many prevention products, which give a promise and, and of course, fulfill, but it's not in such a tangible way. Normally, we don't have to show minuses, but a big chunk of the US market is down compared with a year ago. So in fact, with the exception of the categories in red on the right, the rest of the market was down by 1.4 billion year on year, but that's an aggregate. So there will be still some growth categories in there, the smaller ones, but a lot of categories that were significantly down, including immunity. Globally, we see this tidal wave of new products being launched. We're up to over 30,000 entries in the top 20 countries, including US and Canada since 2013. High interest in probiotics and prebiotics, although the market flatlined. Same for cannabis, many more launches than we've seen before, despite the flatlining of the market. Everyone jumping on the immune stimulants uh, bandwagon, but the market went backwards. And antiseptics, which is still a strong market, producing over 150 new products or significant SKUs during the year.